Hello and welcome to Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalan country at 2NCR Lismore and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com and in New Zealand on Fresh FM as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network. I want to honour the traditional owners of the lands where you are living. They took care of these lands for thousands and thousands of years and then shared this land with us at great cost to their own lives. I want to thank them for the care they have given and continue to give to sit on the earth, listen and care for country. I also want to thank the fairies and crones who came before us in history to fight for our human right to love fiercely. Hello there and welcome to Fierce. So excited to have the Hussey Hicks here who shouldn't need any introduction in our community. But it's amazing. It's a big community, isn't it? And I want to introduce you because some people don't know who you are. I guess I'm lucky to live in the Northern Rivers, so we see you a lot here. And I know that usually you spend nine months of the year traveling around the world playing music and doing all the festivals. Lisa Gents and Jules Parker yeah. go onto your search engine and type in Hussey Hicks and you'll find all these different places you can listen to their music. There's nothing like seeing them live and you're doing gigs again. We are. We're pretty excited about it. <laughs> it's been a couple of months of not playing shows. Yeah, we're pretty desperate to just get stuck straight back into it. Lisa, what's it like to have that magical power that you have? <laughs> well, uh, goodness, I don't know. I, <laughs> I've always considered myself a singer. You know, since I was a kid, all, all I ever wanted to do was sing. I would make up little songs and there would be music all the time. Weirdly, I think I'm uncomfortable and awkward when I'm off the stage without a microphone in my hand. You know, I sort of feel like my happy place and that is where I'm most comfortable and most at ease with myself you know my dorky weird self <laughs> so um I'm just kind of grateful to have music listeners Lisa's superpower is that her voice is amazing right up there with Aretha and I can't imagine what it's like to have that have you trained or you, were you just born yeah. with it I begged my parents for singing lessons when I was about nine years old and I actually went into the conservatorium here in Lismore and had a beautiful singing teacher named Trisette. I was trained by a handful of really incredible coaches. Um, one of them was Elizabeth Lord, who's another fabulous local singer, actually mostly um, incredible women. And then from the age of about 18, I've just been doing my own thing. I've been lucky enough to be surrounded by a really wonderful community of music lovers and and, uh, and music creators and yeah that's enabled me to continue screaming as much as I possibly can basically. <laughs> you do scream. How do you take care of your voice when you're screaming? <laughs> I know that um, there are singing teachers all over the world that would be like no. You know the voice is a muscle it's just a part of your body. You know you work it as hard as you need to and I get a lot of joy pure joy out of singing as hard hard and loud. I will hold a note until my body literally shakes. And for me, that is pure bliss. Obviously, there was a lot of building up. You have to build that muscle up over years. And we play so many shows that we used to. <laughs> we used to. <laughs> um, that you, you know, I'm pretty much always working at it. But if I don't get good sleep and if I don't drink enough water, I start getting run down. The voice starts to degrade and not behave the way that it should. We're not precious type of people. We live a fairly rock and roll kind of lifestyle, but we do try really hard to take care of ourselves. Um, we try and eat well and as much as possible, get good sleep. And if I do push myself too hard, then I have to know when to pull up. And also Jules is incredible too. I mean, what's it like to have your superpower, Jules, described in Blues Fest competitions as top five guitarists up there with Santana. And you are the number one woman guitarist in our country. I don't know about numbers or labels, but I um, certainly enjoy playing guitar. A lot of years of playing with great musicians. How does it feel to do that? 
Well, you know, probably if you'd asked me four months ago, I wouldn't have had an answer. But I know that by not being able to play as much of the intensity of guitar that you only sort of play at shows, you know, it's a big part of who I've become as a person is I love playing with large sounds and things like that that you don't do at home. In playing music, making sounds, it's an extension of your life force. Have you ever stood on the stage without the guitar to sing? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, a bunch of times. Yeah, I, I always wonder how it's happened uh, and what, what the hell am I doing there? Cause I've never <laughs> seen this, but no, I, I, have, I have quite a few times ended up standing on stage without a guitar. Well, Jules is a very impressive singer as well. She, she doesn't even consider herself a singer because she's so obsessed with the guitar and other instrumentation. But yeah, she's a wonderful, wonderful singer. And so you're a band now. There's four amazing women in the band, but you started off how many years ago as a duo? How did you guys meet? Uh, Mutual Friends is sort of the short version. Tracy, who is still playing in our band, our bass player, Tracy Basie. We went to high school together. Yeah, and uh, she joined one of my bands years back. And I always heard about this Jules Parker chick who was living in London. When Jules moved home and I had actually been living overseas as well. So we both sort of ended up back here in this region about the same time. And mm. uh hit it off, started playing music, and we just haven't yet stopped. <laughs> so how many years ago was that? 14. Yeah, 14 years ago now. Six oh, hours, 14 years. It's been a good, good time. <laughs> well, you're so lucky to have each other. You know each other so well, having travelled for nine months of the year together. Do you get um, time apart? When we get home, we have our things that we <clears> like to dive into that aren't all-consuming. Right? Yeah. Jules has been leaning into her production skills quite a bit lately. And, you know, I have all of my things that keep me grounded when I'm not on the road. Lisa ferments everything. I do ferment a lot of things. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we're pretty much a team. And, you know, I think that was what bound us together early in the piece was we just realised that we had common goals. We both love playing music, not necessarily for accolades or for any of those sort of points of success but just because we love playing music and we love traveling and we love meeting people uh, sharing that same goal i think has has meant that we can spend all our time together and still manage to like each other and want to keep doing it yeah. <laughs> even miss it when it stops <laughs> <laughs> we've all been in this situation where not able to sing and dance. It's a bit like living in footloose. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's some weird dystopian present. You imagine reading a wonderful book about and yeah. uh, thinking, oh, wouldn't that be horrible? And then you're like, hang on, this is not a book. And you're right. It's like when what we do is so community based and, and so much of the joy that we get and give is by bringing people together to mingle and to feel free and to experience music and when that's become such a sort of public enemy number one mm. it, it's it, it is a bit heartbreaking we're sad about a lot of things um we were meant to be in canada last week we would be gearing up for a european tour we're meant to be in europe in september and in november for some really great events and a couple of wonderful showcase shows that we've been looking forward to mm -hmm. since last year. So there's a sadness that comes with the realisation that that probably won't happen and that, you know, all of our special people who live all over the world and nourish our souls, we're talking to them on FaceTime, you know, regularly because we know we're not going to see each other. We will often be in a different town um, every day. Yeah, for months. So, yeah, so... Um, slowing down, having less input um, and, you know, stopping to notice things like being here a lot. I've fallen in love with all the bird life, watching seasons, you know, all of these lovely things that make you feel connected to your own bit of country. I think I've only survived by not trying to project too far into the future, you know, just take each day as it comes and hopefully things will get to a point somewhat similar to where we left them. And we have been being very creative. Yeah. We've been writing lots of songs and still playing lots of music. And um, Jules is looking at working with a few different artists. So that'll be inspiring as well, um, doing some production stuff. So, yeah, we're just trying to stay as um, busy and positive as we can, but also slow down.
hello, listeners. My name is Ruben Kay, actress, model, and the only man who goes to the sperm bank to make a withdrawal. And you are listening to the best radio station in the world, the only thing I want dribbling into my orifices, Fierce FM. Enjoy. Yeah. The Hussy Hicks here. You've got a fresh album out. There's a song on the album about the flood on the Wilson River. Yeah. Which is where you are now, is that right? It is. <laughs> it's just did, you, did you get inundated by that flood? Massively, yeah. But we had three and a half metres of water on top of our land here. It was quite intense. <laughs> We actually canoed in from quite a distance away, paddled over the road, over the top of the fence, which was kind of surreal, but um, it was beautiful. It was, yeah. It, it, yeah. It was bizarre being here with the water still up because you could hear things dropping into the water constantly, you know. It was, uh, it was a very strange experience but what came from that and what is in the song is how incredible everyone was like everyone was just there for each other Lismo was just covered in love hearts I actually think that that whole experience gave me hope and resilience lismo has got a name called love more what is love to you guys I think it's everything <laughs> yeah you know I think it's what drives you to be the person that you are music when we were kids yeah. sort of became our way of expressing ourselves and expressing our love and connecting with people. For me, it used to always be just family, you know, I love you, you know, but in the last couple of years, all of my favourite people, we openly give our love to each other now. You're speaking on the phone or on FaceTime or whatever, and it's like, I love you, you know, I miss you, I love you. And I think that it's a much more open thing than a tradition laid out for us. Yeah, I think love and, <clears throat> love and honesty. Truth, yeah. Go hand in hand. Being true, finding your truth, finding the people and activities that connect you to your truth. You have been together over a decade as a band. That's a real achievement. Not many people have relationships that long. Yeah. <laughs> it is pretty phenomenal. I think the recipe um, to success for any relationship is that everyone chooses it every day. You know, you wake up and you go, this is great. I love this life. I think the longevity of a band is understanding everyone has slightly different needs and slightly different life goals at each point and are really valuing the people for what they want at the time too rather than getting caught up in your own visions of how the band will be or the year will be. Mm. And it seems like a lot of the songs would have been written a while ago but they're all very poignant for what's happening right now. Bizarrely. <laughs> yeah, a bit strange. Yeah, gather up the people wasn't supposed to be such a controversial sentiment. No. <laughs> I know you guys are psychic as well as superpowered. It's yeah. bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> the album's called Gather the People. You talk about, you know, you're ready for change and you're gathering up the people for change. Yeah. You're getting ready to hope. Yeah. But what are you guys seeing as psychics? Like, <laughs> in and tell me what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Ooh. laughs> the change that I want to see is just unity. We're just people. We just want to be able to love and be loved, share our lives with people who inspire us and have strong communities. And that's what I really have to focus on at the moment, you know, especially because we are all divided. We're physically divided at the moment. You know? And you're both women in the music industry. And so that in itself is challenging. There's sexism in our culture, a very misogynist country. Have you got any wisdom you could share around speaking up or dealing with that sort of situation? I think we just try and be ourselves and be unapologetically ourselves and be visible. 20 years ago, there was probably a few less women role models in bands, but now there's so many great young girls coming through and not scared to be skateboarders and surfers and guitar players and drummers and... I think all you can just do is, is be unapologetic and be there and don't be scared to take up a space. That's it, unapologetic. You can do whatever you want to do as long as you're, you're driven and passionate about something. We've all had knocks and some of them come because you're a woman. Some of those experiences that we've both had where people will just not give you any respect, you know, because you're a girl with a guitar. But... It usually only takes a few seconds of communicating with someone that you know what you're talking about and, and you're there to do your job and usually you, you gain that respect. 
So yeah, so just, you know, stay strong to yourself and be good at what you do. Be passionate about it. Throw yourself in. Don't be half-assed, you know, (laughs) really have a go. If you want to be treated with respect, then earn it as well. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, music really should be a gender irrelevant space more than, more than anywhere. You know, music, it's gender irrelevant, really. It's music. It's this magical, intangible thing that has nothing to do with your gender. Every time I see you at a different venue, it's a completely different vibe. <laughs> you just go into a place and then you connect with people at the gig and then that's what the gig becomes. It's going to be what it is because of the people and the connection. Yeah, 100%. Especially with the more intimate shows. I guess this next run of shows we're going to do, which are very limited capacity, um, will probably bring out a lot of that. And everyone is possibly looking for different things in a night out than they were six months ago. Like say you're not going out to dance and sweat over all your friends. You might be going out to just feel connected to the community that you've been isolated from. I, I don't know. I guess I'll know in a few weeks. You know, on a big stage show, you'll usually have a general vibe of what your big stage show's going to be like because it's big and you're connecting with a, a one big crowd. But when you play these little intimate shows, the vibe of each of the people is much more of a two-way street. Yeah. We are a reactive band, though. Yeah. We definitely play to a circumstance, you know, to the yeah. situation. For better or worse, you know, I don't know if if it's better for people to know what to expect every time. I know some people are a bit confused by us. Yeah, Yeah, someone will see us play a late rock set at a pub at a festival because, you you know, it's like, oh, cool, you're playing at midnight in the rock venue at a festival. So you'll put on a show that is that. And then uh, then you'll be playing like a 10 a.m. cafe. (laughs) Like little, yeah, or like, you know, you're not going to play the same set. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on to Fears. You're both amazing. I really appreciate what you're doing out in the world. And I hope you have some fantastic gigs the next few years as we open up again. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, thanks, Peter. Yeah, we hope so too. We'll, we'll, be, uh, we'll be doing whatever we can to make that happen. Okay, well, I'm ready to hear your first single. Get Ready. It, it actually was a Neil Young-inspired song. It started out um, being sort of a bit inspired by Tonight's the Night. Yeah, um, you know, the tonight's the night starts like tonight's the night, and I just I had that I want to I want to introduce a song like that, and so it's get ready um, introduction into the song, and the song is about moving forward to a space where you know we can kind of leave all the xenophobia behind and accept people on face value and uh yeah and try and be more open and caring it's got a nice groove and yeah i feel like it's a really uplifting song Ready to stick it in the basement, baby. Ready to let it go. Ready to send it somewhere so it won't come back no more. I'm ready to keep my eyes on the prize like Mavis told us to. I'm ready to try the best I can and do the best that I can do. I'm I'm getting ready. Ready to stick it in the basement, baby. Ready to let it go. Ready to send it somewhere so it won't come back no more. I'm ready to take the labels off. I'm ready for fair play. I'm ready for discrimination to be torn up and thrown away. Send it somewhere so it won't come back no more I'm ready to put fear aside and open my heart up to the world When the sun comes up, gonna shine its light on us as one people
Thank you for listening to Fierce. Fierce. This program celebrates the diversity of LGBTIQ identities and perspectives. Fierce is produced in Bundjalung country at 2NCR Lismore and can also be heard on podcast at fiercefm.podbean.com and in New Zealand on Fresh FM as well as all over Australia through the Community Radio Network. Fierce, Fierce FM on Spotify.